Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com for premium picks, DwyerVIP.com. Here with some thoughts about the upcoming heavyweight title fight. I believe it's the WBA title between champion Alexander Povetkin and challenger and cruiserweight champion Marco Huck. But before I go further, just remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, boxing has an Olympic-style component to it, right? Marco Huck fought Russian fighter Denis Lebedev, and I believe... Boxing fans in Russia know that Lebedev got robbed in that fight. Lebedev controlled that fight from distance, right? Came in, roughed up Marco Huck, I thought, by at least a few rounds. And um, all I can say is when the decision was announced and the fight was in Germany... Marco Huck somehow retained his title, right? He was awarded the decision, even though, in my opinion, Denis Lebedev beat him thoroughly. Now, it could be that I'm biased. Before that fight, I did predict, and the video's still up on YouTube, that Lebedev would beat Marco Huck. I believe that every Russian knows that it happened, just like... Mexican boxing fans know in their hearts that Juan Manuel Marquez beat Manny Pacquiao in their most recent fight, right? And so now you have another Russian, Alexander Povetkin, fighting Marco Huck, who really is, in a sense, public enemy number one in Russia, right? And uh, this fight is going to have a nationalistic component uh, to go along with what's happening in the ring. Now, there are storm clouds all over the place that you need to know about before I give my prediction. The first is that these two guys know each other and have sparred against each other, right? Now, we don't have real information about what happened at the sparring session. But Marco Huck has told numerous reporters that he beat up Povetkin in the sparring session. Povetkin's group obviously denies that, right? So that's storm cloud number one. Storm cloud number two is that Denis Lebedev is actually friends with Alexander Povetkin. The two guys apparently have discussed boxing ad nauseum. And so, you know, Povetkin is going around telling people that he knows how to beat Huck because he's spoken to his friend, Denis Lebedev, who beat Huck but got robbed. You have another storm cloud, and I think this one's big time. Povetkin is trained by Teddy Atlas. Let me just say, Teddy Atlas has lifted Povetkin's game exponentially. Povetkin has looked great of late, right? And all I can say is, it's disappointing to hear that Teddy Atlas is not going to be in Alexander Povetkin's corner for this fight. This is boxing. Grown men have disagreements. Apparently, there's some question about where Lebedev is to train. Atlas wanted him to train in the United States because Atlas has contractual obligations in the United States to uh, media outlets that he serves. Uh, Povetkin wanted uh, Teddy Atlas to come to uh, Russia to train him there. You know how grown men get sometimes. Teddy Atlas is not going to be in the corner. I think that's something to consider. Another problem is the fact that I haven't seen Alexander Povetkin control distance in the ring, the space between him and his opponent, the way Denis Lebedev controls distance. If you look at the Lebedev Huck tape, and I know Povetkin says he's going to imitate Lebedev, but Lebedev has a great jab. Lebedev actually keeps you off of him with the jab. 
right? Even though he has a great left hand, Lebedev is a southpaw. It's really Lebedev's jab that has Marco Huck completely befuddled. So Huck, of course, is a few feet away from Lebedev for most of the fight. Povetkin doesn't really have that sledgehammer type jab, right? He's not going to be confused with Larry Holmes. And so I really do wonder whether Povetkin can actually follow the Lebedev blueprint. Now, all of that said, I believe that Alexander Povetkin more than likely wins the fight. The bet I'm recommending is a straddle, right? I like Povetkin to win. Straddled against, and this will sound odd because Huck's a cruiserweight, but straddled against Marco Huck by knockout. Let's talk about it, okay? You know, Marco Huck actually has a really good right hand. When you watch him, I know he's in the ring doing a lot of other things. His signature punch, and I believe between these two, a heavyweight and a cruiserweight, it is the best punch of the fight. His signature punch is his right hand. Right? He can lead with it. He doesn't have to set the table with a jab. In fact, like Pervetkin, Huck doesn't use a jab that much. Right? Marco Huck is literally a guy who, in my opinion, wins fights because he's able to hit guys with a concussive right hand and then sneak up on them. Once they're hit and they're weakened, then Huck's able to step forward and take people out. There's a distinct possibility in every Huck fight that Huck is able to get the knockout predominantly with that right hand. That right hand is the game changer in this fight, right? And by game changer, I mean whatever is happening in the fight, right? This is boxing. This isn't tennis. This isn't football, this is a sport that can end on one punch. Whatever is happening in the fight, Marco Huck has a cannon on his right shoulder and he can literally end the fight. He can turn the fight if he's able to land that right hand flush. Okay, so understand Marco Huck, the secret to his success in my opinion is that he has a really good right hand. He also needs disorder. Huck, and it might surprise some people, is a lot like Roy Jones Jr., right? In my opinion, Marco Huck needs disorder. He's not that good a boxer from distance. He cannot systematically take you out. That's not his game. Rather, what his game is, is to hang around, right, with a big right hand. He's hanging around. He waits for things to break down before he comes in throwing punches, right? He's not the kind of guy who can cause things to break down. Rather, he's hanging around, and then he's hoping that you turn away from him, turn your back to him, get sloppy, you know, drop your hand, then he wants to, you know, if you drop your left hand, then he wants to shoot his right hand over your left hand, charge in, and throw a combination when things break down. In a sense, he's an ambush fighter, right? This is very different. He's an opportunist as opposed to a technician who is breaking you down, right? An opportunist is a guy who's just hanging around, he sees an opportunity, he leaps on it, right? A technician, someone like Antonio Tarver, for example, uh, Eric Morales, these guys literally come in with a different mindset where they're protecting themselves at all times and it's chest. They move here, you move there. They move here, you move there. Checkmate. They figure they have a clean shot on whatever they're setting up. They're setting the table, right? Opportunists like Huck are different. 
He has a big right hand. What he's doing is he's just hanging around. You get sloppy. You drop your left. Bang! Hits you with the right hand. Jumps in. Is in your face. Right? That's Marco Huck. Let me also point out that while I don't believe, and I know it's sacrilege because Huck, Huck has been a cruiserweight champion, why I don't believe Huck is that great from outside, I don't believe Huck is that great from inside. Right? While he can clinch. And if you look at his fight against Steve Cunningham, the two guys are hugging each other for much of that fight. While he can clinch, in my opinion, he doesn't really know how to fight inside. In other words, when he gets inside, sure, he can clinch, he can tie you up. But understand there's a far cry between him and someone like, let's say, Bernard Hopkins, who knows how to get a hand free tie up your hands and while inside hits you in the kidneys hits you in the body is leaning on you but is actually doing stuff that's not Marco Huck let me also point out and I know this is sacrilege because I know Huck has a big-time trainer in Germany Huck has a passive defense he's kinda like Joshua Clotty in other words when he has his hands up He's not doing much. Now, again, that's very different than, let's say, a Hopkins or Roberto Duran, who they have their hands up. And they're actually, while you're hitting them, they're hitting you. In other words, they're not in a shell just defending themselves. They could actually roll with punches and throw punches while they're blocking your punches. That's not Marco Huck. Right? Marco Huck, just when he's in shell mode, it's like Roy Jones. Right? And I mean older Roy Jones. He just covers up. Right? So his defense is really passive. He's not leading you into punches. Right? Marco Huck is really effective at mid range, not far away. He can't outbox you from distance, doesn't have the great jab, doesn't really do much there. And he's not that great up close. What he's great at doing is hanging around at mid-range. You turn your back. He throws a right hand. He jumps in. He's a great athlete. Okay? I believe he has a puncher's chance in the fight. That's it. Provetkin, more advanced fighter. Right? He's bigger. He's the heavyweight. More importantly, he is a combination puncher. Right? Right? He doesn't have the big right hand. He doesn't have one punch knockout power. What he has are very fast hands, and he throws clever combinations. In other words, he can be throwing a combination up top and then quickly drop his left shoulder and throw a left hand right to your body. Right. In other words, very hard to keep up with them. You're blocking too many punches right his hand speed is such that against one of my favorite fighters Rushlin Chigayev right we all have favorites one of my favorites Rushlin Chigayev um, who I think by the way <clears throat> was a tougher matchup for Povetkin than Huck is right against Rushlin Chigayev Chigayev spent the first few rounds just trying to block punches right Povetkin has very fast hands. Now, unlike Huck, who's kind of like a pot shotter, right? You know, Huck's just trying to land a big right hand. Then, when you're hurt, jump in and mix it up. But Vetkin's actually trying to methodically beat you, right? But Vetkin, who used to be just an athlete in the ring, now that he's with Teddy Atlas has actually turned into a technician. It's a little bit shocking. I thought his fight against Chagayev was a high-level chess match, right? Povetkin is actually coming in. He has an active defense, right? More advanced than Huck. He comes in with his hands up. He wants you to throw, to hit this forearm, so he could actually drop the shoulder with you leaning on this forearm to hit you with an uppercut, right? 
he's actually turning into a technician and he has great balance. So he can actually bend at the waist, right? He, you know, he's standing up tall and he could literally bend, hit you with a body shot or hit you with an uppercut. And he's gone from, and this is rare, he's gone from being what I consider to be a pattern fighter, just a volume pattern guy, to now being adaptive reactive because he figures out midway through the Chagaya fight that Chagayev is vulnerable to uppercuts. I encourage everyone to look at the last half of that fight. You'll see that he gets close enough to Chagayev to throw uppercuts and his balance is such that he's able to throw right and left uppercuts, right? He knows how to keep his balance. He also is able to fight backing up. The latter part of that Chagaya fight, he had a technician. Chagaya is a technician's technician, right? Better technique than Povetkin, quite frankly, in my opinion. And Povetkin literally fighting on his back foot was able to keep his composure, throw combinations, figure things out, right? Here's the problem. And it's apparent in the sixth round of his fight against Chagayev. Chagayev, southpaw, lefty. You know that Chagayev wants to land his left hand. That's his dominant punch, right? Povetkin, knowing that Chagayev's number one weapon is his left hand, somehow at the beginning of the sixth round gets hit with several left hands, right? He can be countered by a great technician. In other words, Povetkin is just learning how to be a technician in his early 30s, right? He's not Floyd Mayweather. He's not the kind of fighter who can take away an opponent's money punch and do that for 12 rounds. Now, granted, Huck is a righty. He's not the lefty Chagayev is. And granted, Huck is a little bit more open-ended than Chagayev. Chagayev is highly structured, very dangerous fighter, right? But my point to you is this. If Povetkin has the kind of defensive lapses that he had at the beginning of the sixth round against Richlin Chagayev, he could be badly hurt and stopped by Marco Huck. In other words, Povetkin has a lot of talent, but he can't control distance. He doesn't have the jab to just maintain, you know, two feet between him and the opponent. He's not Vladimir Klitschko, right? He doesn't have that jab that says, hey, you're going to be outside until you can get away from the jab, right? So we know Huck is going to have moments where he's close to Povetkin. And while Povetkin is the more structured, more advanced fighter, better defensively, can throw while he's covering up, actually has the faster hands than Huck. We also know that Povetkin inexplicably has defensive lapses that don't last for one punch, but last for entire sections of rounds, right? If you look at that sixth round, you're going to see that bad habits are hard to shake because literally at the beginning of that round, uh, Chagayev lands at least three hard left hands. And it's bewildering that anyone could face a southpaw like Chagayev and not be prepared for that, you know, left hand, right? It's, it, it's just amazing. Let me also say, too, bad habits die hard. Povetkin has this bad habit of going straight back, right? He does work, then he goes straight back. Against a guy with great feet like Marco Huck, who's very mobile, that's a recipe for disaster. Because you'll come in on Huck, he'll cover up. Then as you go back, Huck's going to come forward. And Huck's going to be trying to throw punches. You'll block most of them, but all Huck has to do is hit you with that right hand. Huck has mobile power, right? And so what Prevetkin, the superior boxer, has to do is to play the angles better. Don't go straight back. Go to the side, right? To sum up, because I'm near 20 minutes, I like Alexander Povetkin to win this fight 
straddled against Huck by KO. Huck does have a puncher's chance, but I'm expecting him to get methodically outboxed over the 12th over the 12 rounds and both guys have excellent stamina if you see Povetkin starting to land with regularity body punches and uppercuts you'll know that he has complete control of the fight let me know what you think leave your comments for me here on YouTube visit us at gamblersadvisory.com thanks for watching